inspection lamp was a load of crap so I've gone out to screw fix and I've splashed out on Big Larry it's called I don't know why they call it Big Larry it's magnetic super magnetic I can actually see what I'm doing well I've been around the car Coming off the subject, if I could turn this uh, light off. I'm checking CV joints, wheel bearings, track rod ends, all that kind of thing. Both front wheels are wobble free, which is good. Still plenty of tread on the tyres. Bit of scuffing on this inside edge. But front wheels are good. I applied the handbrake and the driver's side locked up lovely but the passenger side kept spinning so on these uh, older Mark 3 Minis you get a, the twin handbrake cable so it was just a matter of just tightening up this left hand uh, cable just to pull the shoes in a little bit closer and uh, it balanced the handbrake out a bit so hopefully now I'll stop rolling backwards down hills. Um, the only concern I had was the, the rear wheels. So when I checked the rear wheels, both of them have got a little little bit of movement in them. Well, I'm talking, I'm talking a fraction. And what I hate about these um, setups is when you assemble them, it obviously gives you the torque setting for for tightening up the big the big nut um, but obviously that is dependent on you hitting one of the castellated openings on there to get the split pinning down that hole 
um, and the difference between getting it there and getting it there could be any, any number of newtons greater. So I've just checked the bearings out. Um, it's not that much grease and there's a little bit of, I mean these are Timkin roller bearings, a tapered roller bearings so they're the proper job. There's a little bit of movement on the cage and I couldn't remember how much movement you get on but there's nothing dramatic. Um, this rear one never falls off like the front one does, it seems to stick itself onto the stub axle. But um, I think I'm going to pack that out with grease again. The um, the front one, you can see there they're on spaces at the back. So before on the old, on the really older ones, you used to get you didn't used to get that, and you had to put like a like a bushing. Put that one on there and that one. Again, it's got a bit of movement. But again, I don't think it's anything major because I'm looking at this this new one I've got. And that's got like the same kind of wibble wobble on the cage around the bearings. So I don't think they're that good. They seem to spin all right, there's no noises. Um, there's maybe a little bit of greyness on the needles on the back, but nothing. No marks or, or abrasion or anything really. So I think they'll be all right. I'm just gonna um, put a bit more grease in there and tighten them up. Uh, one piece of warning is, um, tightening up this driver's side, you tighten up clockwise in the traditional fashion. So when you're setting your torque wrench and it goes click or beep, it's obviously uh, simple to set the torque setting on that nut but just be careful on the passenger side because the thread is a left hand thread and to my horror when I set these up originally I haven't got this one off yet but when I set this up originally I tighten the nut up anti-clockwise as you do got the torque wrench started tightening it up and then realised after the wheel bearing had exploded and locked the wheel up and I came back down the road with a with a nice flat spot on my tyre burning rubber was my torque wrench didn't work anti-clockwise and it wasn't telling me so I was there just keep tightening the bleeding thing up and waiting for it to click and it didn't click, so I probably must have ramped that nut up beyond belief. So just be careful, some torque wrenches don't warn you when you tighten up anti-clockwise. I've now got a different one now, um, which does do that, which does do it both, both ways. So yeah, I'll pack these back up and reassemble it.
torquing these up. That's the thing, go for it, some people who don't. So I'm forcing it round now to the next. Try to force it round to the next one, to the next castellation on there. You end up just crunching the bearing up. I still feel a little bit of play in there. Not much. It's almost, especially with low leverage on there. I don't think I should force that. Yeah, always stick a little pin in. It's definitely not the radio radio sound. Solid. Well, we'll fully tighten those wheel butts up when it's back on the ground. Sun's out. Volkswagen face fan. So I'll show you under the back. This uh, RC40 thing, exhaust, did have a centre box on it. Um, but every time I went over a speed bump, it would smash into the ground. So I cut it out and welded some pipe on. So now I've only got the back box. I don't think it's that much noisier to be honest. Um, it's pretty tidy under here. I found the bolt missing, sorry, the nut missing off the exhaust hanger there. Must have unraveled itself. So now it leaks. Uh, all the brake shoes have got thickness on. Handbrake, I've just sprayed a bit of WD 40 on the mechanism just to stop the rust for a bit. Uh, but the subframe's pretty clean. No drips from the brake lines or anything. Bit of bit of green on the copper pipe, but all looks pretty good. Tighten that drain plug up on the engine a little bit. Give it a nip. See if that stops it from leaking. Sort of a bit of coolant, so I'll go around and tighten up the Jubilee clips and run the engine up to temperature. If it'll start, if the petrol's not too old. So yeah, we'll see if we can start it up in a bit. God, it's raining again. As long as it doesn't rain on Sunday. There's a car fit through them doors. Let's reattach the battery and uh, see if we can get this thing started. See if we can uh, aim for the door opening and get it out without hitting anything. Um, petrol's not, well, the old car's not been used since November last year. So God knows what the battery's like. We'll give it a go.
real. I've got a selfie stick. No, I don't look any better. Having a bit of a tardy around at the moment. Got these shelves here. Um, free. Um, somebody we know clearing the garage out. I've got about a ton and a half of aluminium on there. Some nice brackets, which we, uh, which I've been waiting for about. Oh, yeah, 14 months from China to turn up. Been having a bit of a tidy up. Not really got much further with that. Plus, as you've probably seen, I've been messing around with that. Um, yeah, sorry I cut the video out, but I got it started. Um, but I think I, um, I think I flooded it. I think I had the choke out too much, and then it wouldn't start. And I was thinking it wasn't getting any petrol, um, but it wouldn't start. And I pushed the choke in, tried to start it, and it started. So, yeah, it took and running, took it for a spin. And I filled it up with super unle unleaded. When I say filled it up, I've just about squoused 30 quid in there, even with the prices as they are. So I've been having a bit more of a tidy up here, I'm trying to clear some space under here. Because from the same garage clear out I've been doing, I've got a free workbench coming. So never look a gift horse in the mouth. I'll I'll have it, I'll go and collect it tomorrow, tomorrow night. And stick it in the hole, as they say. So yeah, hopefully this should start and get me to Hingley Hall on Sunday. Open to Ted, my favourite show of the year. Two tickets. See you there.